Yo, what's up, A Push Peeps? We have A Push Review, this Spanish, English, French, and Dutch colonization video for you today. This one is screaming to me a potential essay topic or short answer question topic. So make sure you are familiar with these European powers and their colonization of the Americas. All right, so let's start off. This is a combination of periods one and two. Now, much of these periods focus on European exploration and their impact on the Americas. And as I just mentioned, this is a great potential short answer slash essay topic. AP has asked these questions before in the past, and it's and they could very well ask them again on your test in May. So some big idea questions to think about. What were similarities and differences among the European powers? And what impacts did each power have on North America and its inhibitants? So European exploration, let's talk about reasons for. By the way, if you see words here that are bolded, that means it is mentioned in the curriculum and you best know it. So there are things like wealth, power and status, and the spread of Christianity or religion. Think of the three G's, gold, glory, and God. Those three G's are reasons why European countries were exploring the Americas. We have technological improvements which allowed them to explore things like the sextant up here, which was like its first which was like a GPS for ships, which allowed them to determine exact location. And also the Caravelli ship like this, which was developed by the Portuguese, which traveled much faster. Interactions with natives during this time, many or most Europeans saw natives as uncivilized. They would use terms like savages and barbaric when describing Native Americans. And there were differences over land ownership. The idea that Native Americans saw land as belonging to a group of people or the community, whereas Europeans saw it belonging to individuals. There was differences in family and gender roles and also religion that led to conflicts between European and Native. So there was this misunderstanding of each group by the other. So let's talk about Spanish colonization. Everything in red, that's where Spain was. Spain became the early European leader in exploration, and they tend to settle in South America and the southwestern portion of the United States. That's why if you travel to Latin America, they speak Spanish. Spain saw precious metals, things like gold and silver, and they sought to acquire these from mines. We have Spanish conquistadors, people like Hernan Cortez, who conquered Tenochtitlan, which was the present-day Mexico City in 1519, and he conquered the Aztecs due to advanced weapons and disease. Native Americans were not immune to European diseases. Francisco Pizarro conquered the Incas in Peru. And then we have the emergence of the Columbian Exchange, which is, which is the transfer of goods, people, people's ideas, and diseases across the Atlantic. So what are the impacts on the Americas? Holy cow, know this. The impacts of the Columbian Exchange on America on the Americas and on Europe. On the Americas, we see disease decrease native populations drastically, as many as 90% in some areas died, and the livestock and guns altered hunting and warfare, especially for Native Americans living on the Great Plains. The introduction of things like horses transformed native life. Well, what's the impact on Europe? Well, new crops, things like potatoes and maize, increased the population of Europe drastically, and this increased wealth led to capitalism, the emergence of capitalism, and the decline of feudalism. Spanish colonial societies we're going to talk about now. Spain really sought tight control from the crown. They were very active in the colonies, and they wanted to convert many natives. Again, that idea of God with the three Gs. Most Spanish settlers were men, leading to racially mixed populations with natives. We have the emergence of a caste system which included mestizos, which were people of mixed Spanish and native ancestry. This is a very key point. Spanish men tended to intermarry with Native Americans. We'll see that's not at all what happens with the English. So there's a good contrasting point for the two European countries. Mulattoes were also part of the caste system. These were people that were mixed Spanish and African ancestry. The encomienda system developed, which were royal land grants to Spanish settlers, and the Spanish settlers promised to Christianize natives on the land, and they would gain tribute from the natives. In other words, it was simply slavery for Native Americans. I have a detailed video on the encomienda system. Check it out in the description below. Eventually, the encomienda system is going to be replaced by African slave labor. 
There were debates that emerged over how natives should be treated. We see the emergence of two people in particular, Juan de Sepulveda. He argued the harsh treatment of natives was justified. And this guy, Bartolome de las Casas, he advocated or favored better treatment of natives. And his writings really helped lead to the decline of the encomienda system. He was very critical of Spain. And his writings introduced the idea of the black legend, this idea that Spain was a brutal colonizer that exploited natives. And he really brought a lot of attention to the plight of Native Americans. The Pueblo Revolt occurred in 1680 in the southwestern portion of the United States. The Pueblo Indians of New Mexico, they successfully overthrew the Spanish for about a dozen years. Now the Spanish do regain control, but as a result, they are much more accommodating of native culture. They were less restrictive of their practices, especially religious practices. All right, let's jump on over to English colonization. First permanent settlement was in Jamestown in 1607, and here is Jamestown. You can go and visit it today in Virginia. Settled along the Atlantic in the present-day U.S. and Caribbean, and they applied many of the same tactics used in Ireland towards natives. Now, before the English colonized America, they took over Ireland, and they treated the Irish very harsh, and they basically looked at them as a separate group of people. They basically sought to dominate the Irish. They, the natives were seen as savages and they were excluded from English settlement. So unlike the Spanish or the French, which we'll see, which they have, you know, they're living amongst the natives. That does not happen with the English colonies. Again, that's another good contrasting point. England sent large amounts of men and women to the colonies, unlike the French and Spanish, which sent relatively few numbers of men. The English sent a lot of people that were both men and women. They focus on agriculture and they had hostile relationships or conflicts with the natives. There's more info for your contrasting paragraph. Let's talk about the different colonies. Well, in New England, colonies like Massachusetts and Rhode Island, they were founded, Massachusetts, by Puritans. They sought to establish a community of like-minded believers. This dude, John Winthrop, gave a famous speech where he talked about Massachusetts being a city upon a hill, a model society for all of the world to look up to. And, he, and they really focused in New England on agriculture and commerce. So it was a mixed economy. Those that were not like-minded believers were outcasts. People like Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, which challenged Puritan doctrines, they were kicked out of the colony. The middle colonies, we're going to jump on over to colonies like Pennsylvania and New York, they were the most diverse religiously, ethnically, and demographically of the English colonies. So you see people that are not just from England emigrating to the middle colonies, but other countries like Germany as what is present-day Germany as well. Many immigrants from Europe came to these colonies. They were religiously tolerant. Pennsylvania was founded by this dude, William Penn, who saw it as a holy experiment where it would be religiously tolerant and he hoped to make money. The southern colonies, which include the Chesapeake, Maryland and Virginia, North Carolina, those three focus on tobacco, which was initially, and they initially used indentured servants and later African slavery after Bacon's Rebellion, which plantation owners moved from a temporary labor supply of indentured servants to a permanent one of African slaves. South Carolina and the West Indies, they focused on rice and sugar cultivation and slaves made up most of the population. It was very hot, very humid, and very arduous work for these slaves. And the colonies had some form of representative assembly. New England had the town hall meetings, Virginia had the Virginia House of Burgesses. All right, England promoted this idea of mercantilism, the idea that the colonies existed for the benefit of the mother country, and the purpose was to provide raw materials and markets for England. They focused on controlling a balance of trade. The more gold and silver that flew into the country, the better and more wealthy that country would become. The navigation acts were created that allowed for colonies to trade only with England. So if you're living in Massachusetts, for example, you're expected to only trade with England. And many colonists resisted these acts and they smuggled. This will be a common theme pre-1776 that colonies will smuggle to get around these laws. All right, let's jump on over to French colonization. We see here the Louisiana Purchase and much of Canada is where the French were focused. So Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec in 1608, one year after Jamestown. Most of the colonists were men, again, unlike the English, who were men and women. Like Spain, France accepted intermarriage. Métis 
were children of French and native ancestry. And they really, the French really focused on fur trade with natives. They developed friendly relations with natives. Corps de Bois were these French fur traders. They were called runners of the woods. And New France had a governor general that, that ruled and was appointed in Paris. So like Spain, the crown kind of had tight control over this. And there was no representative assembly like there was in the English colonies. So let's talk about relations with natives. They did not take a substantial amount of native land like the English did, and they did not force them into slavery like the Spanish. So the French really had the best relationship with natives out of those three. Christian Indians were allowed to have a lot of autonomy. Again, that word autonomy uh, or independence. And many natives were killed by diseases just like they were by the Spanish and the English. All right, we'll finish up with Dutch colonization. We have Henry Hudson of the Dutch East India Company. He reached New York in 1609. And the Dutch established trade posts in New York in present-day Manhattan and Albany. And like the French, the Dutch sent few Europeans to settle, and they formed alliances and intermarried with the natives. So three of the four European countries we've talked about intermarried with the natives. It's the English that did not. The Dutch created the idea of the Joint Stock Company, which is a forerunner to the present day corporation. And this is where people would pool their money together and they would share in the profits and losses of voyages. Again, we talked about that with Jamestown, the establishment of Jamestown by the English. That was created the joint stock company by the Dutch. New Netherland, they dominated the Atlantic slave trade early on. And married women retained rights when married, unlike English women who lost their land. If you were an English woman and you were single, and you owned land and you got married, you would lose that land. It would go to your husband. There was some religious toleration, although it was done privately, not publicly. Behind, in, in your home, you could practice whatever religion you really wanted to, but you couldn't do it publicly. All right, some test tips for multiple choice and short answer. Reasons for European exploration, whether it's the three Gs or technology. Characteristics of European colonies. Know the characteristics of the British colonies, the New England ones, the middle and the southern. The impacts of contact on natives and Europeans, the Columbian Exchange, that is just screaming to me a short answer question. And for essays, comparing and contrasting characteristics and goals. That was a summer essay for my students. Some things to keep in mind, the British send a large number of men and women. I've said this so many times, I hope you remember this. They also focus on agriculture and they had hostile relations with natives. The French have fewer Europeans and they focus on trade alliances with natives. Now, that oh so important synthesis point which could make or break an essay. A way to achieve this, if the essay does not tell you to, you can divide it up into political, social, and economic categories. Now, the easier way, I believe, is to connect it to another time period. But you can't just mention it, you have to explain it. So, for example, you could say, you could write something like this. The arguments used by Europeans to justify colonization included spreading Christianity. This is a similar argument that was used by some Americans that sought to spread Christianity in Asia in the late 19th, early 20th centuries after the U.S. acquired land in the Spanish-American War. So I'm not just naming another time period. I'm not just connecting it. I'm explaining how it's similar. A lot of students have no problem connecting. The explanation is where many students lose points, but that's not going to be you because you know what to do. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and share this with anybody you think would find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys watching. I look forward to seeing you back for more videos. Thank you very much and have a good day.